Hey guys, how you doing? So now let's do uh, n uh, now let's do free fall. All right. So <clears throat> really, we're gonna look at kinematics. It's the same way. We're still gonna do one uh, kin kinematics in one dimension, but instead of talking about the horizontal, we're gonna talk about the vertical. Usually, when we're talking about the vertical, the acceleration in the y is always going to be considered gravity. All right. So there is an acceleration in the y. So instead of saying x, we're always gonna say y. Uh, hor uh, vertical position. And so in this class, guys, it's really just going to be a negative 10 meters per second squared. We did talk a little bit about this on Friday. I know it's 9.81, and if we're trying to land on the moon and build a bridge and do some, like, really, like, you know, like, NASA-type things or, you know, tech stock type things, yeah, let's use 9.81. When we're trying to just get the gist of things and we're really just trying to learn about these concepts, use 10. That's absolutely okay. Um, I don't mind using 10. The AP test allows you to use 10, plus it does make your calculations, you know, a little bit easier. So we can still make the same kinematic equations, okay? And so let's start with that. So, the, uh, so if we want to start with gravity, okay, things just falling, okay? So, you know, gravity, which is negative 10 um, meters per second squared, that's going to be a constant graph. Being that it's going to be a constant graph, where, you know, there's my acceleration over time graph, there's this. Again, if you want to work up in the graphs as we go up, remember we're working, when we're working up, we want to get area. We do want to take uh, integrations. Okay, we do want to take, you know, integrations, we want to work area, boom, you have your velocity. And boom, you have your position graph. They're all over time. So now velocity is going to be somewhat like this. And then the y is going to be some sort of parabolic type squared curve. Notice this is negative. It's below the zero. So because it's negative, it's a frowny parabola. Super corny, but it works every time. The, the parabola is frowning at you because it's a negative sloped parabola. And why is it negative slope? Because of the change in it is going to be a negative, a negative 10 in this case. So it's always going to vary here. Now, the only, the only drawback to using integration in this perspective is I don't know where in, the, where in the velocity axis I'm actually going to start. Just because gravity is a negative 10 also does not mean that something is going to be thrown up in the air. There's always going to be some initial condition. That initial condition could have been just simply dropped. Hold on. Okay, that initial uh, that initial position could have been you know me throwing it up in the air. Okay, uh, and all those things. So there's a lot of different ideas. It could be LeBron James taking a free throw. I don't know why I use him as the example. I'm not a Lakers fan, um, but again, he, you know he's still in the playoffs and the Spurs aren't, so I can't talk. Um, plus, he can destroy me in basketball. All right. <clears throat> so these are the basis here. But how can we get initial positions and figure things out? Again, still getting some integration, still getting some area. So, so if we want to take this and, and kind of calculate this for a little bit, and if that's even a word, uh, add, add a little physics. So again, if we take our acceleration, which in this case, let's just call it gravity, it can be acceleration in the Y. So really either of these terms. If we're going to be being more generic on maybe something's just rolling down a hill, that'd be a Y acceleration, but we can, it's going to be a component of G. So let's use G so we start kind of understanding things, how things are related to gravity, because gravity is always going down for real, okay? Um, so gravity is going to be, you know, the derivative of velocity, Y, okay, uh, uh, with respect to time. All right, so let's get rid of this spot right here. Uh, just to make life a little easier, there, there was a video about this, so going super fast, it's your dV is going to equal G dt. I'm going to integrate this from velocity not to velocity, and I'm going to integrate this from zero to time. Those are the bounds that I care about. And so uh, if I'm just going to draw velocity, boom, I get velocity, uh, velocity between these two bounds, okay? And so now it's just really hot, top minus bottom, high minus low, I don't know, uh, velocity not. All right, now we're going to go here. So now g dt, it's just a constant. So when we're going to integrate a constant, you got to stick a t to that. Because when you derive gt, it's just going to be g, the constant number. 
and so now it's just going to be g t, but again between zero and time. So again, it's going to be g t minus g well, zero. It's not go, it's zero. So we're going to get rid of that. And again, look, there's your kinematic equation. Again, these are in the y. Um, all right, and you can still add this to both sides and you'll get the equation of velocity in the y is gravity times time plus velocity initial in the y. Same thing we've gotten all along using integration going up. But again, now, as long as we know this initial condition, we know exactly where that velocity is going to start with. Where does the velocity immediately start to change? If I'm throwing it up, okay, if we were throwing it up in the air, yes, it's going up, it gets positive velocity, but it's slowing down as it's going up, and then it's going to speed up as it's coming back down. All right, so let's use this. I'm gonna keep this thing at the bottom just for, just for about another minute, because now let's get the other kinematic equation. Okay, let's get the third kinematic equation. And so doing the same thing, I'm gonna take my uh, position and my velocity in the y, if you remember, is just dy over dt. So my vertical velocity is my derivative of the y vertical position divided by the time, okay? I do want to substitute this for this in just a minute, all right? Stay tuned. But again, I'm going to multiply both sides by dt, multiply both sides by dt. So now my dy is going to be vy dt. Okay, now I'm going to substitute this in and I'm going to integrate. So I'm going to integrate dy between, uh, uh, um, not d, but y initial and y. That's not yo, that's y initial, right? Why not? We could joke all day. And then I'm also going to uh, integrate this from 0 to time, all right? Because, again, dt is the one that I want to do. But check this out. I'm going to stick this in for vy, okay? So... Um, just sticking that in, let's erase this and expand out just a little bit. And so now it's g t plus velocity initial in the y d t. All right, I'm going to get rid of this now. All right, this is now just going to integrate as before. Again, I'm s skipping steps, but again, dy or y minus y naught. And now here, I'm going to integrate g t. I'm going to integrate g t it's going to be gt squared over 2 because I'm going to add 1 and then I'm also going to divide by the sum of what I got. So I turned it into a squared, so I'm going to divide by 2 uh, and then I'm going to add, it's just a constant. When you got a constant, you got to sneak a time in there. Babe, don't tell anybody it's a secret. I'm kidding, I just said sneak. Ignore me. Times time. You don't have to say plus c because I gave you the bounds. If I didn't give you bounds, you'd plus see it. We already have the bounds. And again, if I, this is with time, I could technically subtract g zero squared over two minus velocity not zero because that's that original bound. But I'm not going to worry about a bound that's zero right now because we're good. So now we have this. I'm going to add pos uh, position over here. And here's your third kinematic equation. My y is really gt squared. Can't we just say 1 half gt squared plus velocity in the initial in the y plus that. So this is going to be your parabolic type shape. All right. Um, so that's right at the little minute mark there. All right. So here's just, uh, you know, there's just a couple, um, couple examples we can go over. One is... Um, well, if you ever want to know how tall something is, you can throw something off a building. Don't recommend doing that, right? But let's say that, you know, we're on a road trip and we're in a hotel or um, honestly it was an apartment my wife and I were living in. Okay, so we were at some balcony in an apartment. We were on the third floor uh, when we were living in this apartment together, all right? So we're standing up here on the balcony and I had no idea how tall this balcony was, okay? I was really curious. So what I did was pulled a penny and I held it out about arm's length. I mean, whether it's in my head or arm, I don't know, it's my story. So I held it out above, right above the railing and I dropped it 
And as I dropped it, I did time it. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. That splat, and it hit the ground. And let and let's just pretend that the penny dropped with a time is three seconds. Let's just say it dropped with three seconds. I can now use all three of those kinematic equations to figure out what was my velocity at the very bottom. I can also figure out um, how far I was, how far it fell. And I, can, and I can use some kinematic equations to do that. Just because I was able to time it, I was counting thousands or hippopotamuses, Mississippis, you know, about three seconds. So to do that, we can now figure out my instantaneous velocity, when was velocity that I hit the ground, and then how far did it actually fall, all right? And so um, I'm gonna take this as, I'm gonna take this spot right here as the origin. This was zero meters. If I take, I could have taken this at zero meters if I wanted, but I'm gonna take this at zero, it was going down, and so let's kind of play from there. I did drop it from rest, so my velocity initial was zero. Let's get that velocity first. Knowing that first kinematic equation, my velocity in the y is gravity times time plus my velocity naught, okay, uh, in the y. I said I dropped it from rest, initial condition. This equals zero meters per second. I'm gonna ignore it now. I do know my gravity, it's a constant. On Earth, it's gonna be a negative 10, so approximately, It was 30 meters per second as it hit the ground. All right, again, I just substituted negative 10 for gravity. I substituted three with the three seconds that I counted before it hit the ground. I don't know how accurate it was, but we're gonna go with that, okay? And again, that negative 30 meters per second, three times 10, pretty simple, um, you know, just multiplication is really what we're doing at this point. I got my position, check that. I got my velocity. Now I can get my position doing the exact same thing. Um, I said I labeled this at zero meters. That's important because zero meters is my initial position. That's where I started from. So my y, where do I end up? And it should be a negative number, right? Because it's falling. So there's a something mentally you can think of as you're going, I should get a negative based on my setup. If I get a positive, I did something wrong and I can go back and look at my work. If I have something negative, life's good, I can keep going because that's, it, that's where it should you know, be, okay? I never realized I talked so much with my hands until I started recording myself doing lessons. That's highly embarrassing. All right, one half gt squared from that kinematic equation plus velocity initial in the y times time plus my y initial, okay? Um, I know my y initial. I said I started at zero, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore that for now because I'm going to start at zero because I said the initial condition was zero. I do know my velocity initial. It was also zero, wasn't it? I dropped it from rest, so I'm going to ignore this. This is the only thing I need to worry about in this case. So because of that, one-half gt squared, so my y is one-half negative 10 meters per second squared, and I'm going to multiply that by three seconds squared. Um, what am I going to square? Just the time. I'm not... I'm not gonna do one half times 10 and get five times three, 15 squared. No, just the three squared. So three squared is nine times 10 is 90. Make it a negative, negative 90. Put it in half or divide it by two and my Y is gonna be a negative 45 meters. I have now told you what spot in space uh, it dropped all the way to. I started at zero and it fell all the way to a negative 45. Okay, you might be thinking to yourself, self, what if I want to make this the zero meters and I want to know how high in the air did I drop it from? I make it a positive 45 meters. But here's how we do that, okay? So let's go into that same exact equation here. All right, plus... Um, Velocity initial times time plus y initial. Now I'm asking where did I drop it from? This is what I don't know. I do know my y because I ended at zero. 
see what I'm doing with that. It fell for three seconds. I ended at zero. What's this? I still dropped it from rest. So here's my new equation. Zero is going to be equal to one half g t squared plus y naught. <clears throat> I got to subtract it over here. So a negative y naught is going to equal one half g t squared. I could have made it is a negative one half g t squared if I subtracted this over. Uh, you pick the notation you want to do. It's three seconds, right? So let's hold on to that number. Now I plug everything in. I don't know where did I start from. It should be 45. Is going to be equal to one half times a negative 10 meters per second squared times three seconds squared. Hey, it's the same numbers. Three squared is uh, nine times 10 is 90. Make it negative, negative 90. Hack it in half, 45. So a negative y naught is going to be a negative 45 meters. A negative and a negative on both sides make them a positive. My y initial was 45 meters in the air. So you can change your bounds. You're going to get the same answer. Did I start 45 meters in the air and it fell to zero? Or did I just drop it and it fell to a negative or it just fell 45 meters? So the, the, the way you set it up is the way you're going to get your answer. Regardless, it just fell for 45 meters if you just want to talk about its distance. But you want to talk some sort of vectors and actually figure out what the direction, it's, you know, beauty is in, in the eye of the beholder. It depends on how you're, uh, you know, mentioning that, okay? Um, so here's one. Let's say it's the same kind of idea, but now... Instead of just dropping that penny, I chunk the penny in the air, okay? And just so happens I had a radar gun looking at that penny that I threw in the air. I don't know why, but I did. So my velocity in the Y started out at, um, oh, let's say how about 40 meters per second. I threw it really fast, and I threw it in the up direction. You want to see a little picture about what's happening, you know, pictures worth a thousand words or a thousand variables, I don't know what the math term is, but I threw it up and it fell straight down, okay? Let's say it fell, same apartment, it fell 45 meters, so we'll call this, I don't know, you want to call this zero and this 45 or this 45? Oh, you can't talk to me. Um, we'll call this zero We'll call this a positive 45 meters. So I'm going to make this my zero. You can make this your zero if you honestly want to. It doesn't matter, okay? But I'm going to make this my zero meter. We'll just keep it in positives because I'm having a great day. All right, and uh, so let's go over here. Let me get a different color marker, okay? So what I do want to know is um, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? So I do want to know my velocity at the bottom. I did give you my velocity initial was 40 meters per second. It was positive. I threw it up. Okay. Now it's going to go back down here to get my final velocity in the Y. I can use my, fi uh, my, 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 uh, my fifth kinematic equation. Remember, we don't worry about our fourth. And I'm just going to substitute Y's where it says X. So it's the third one, though, in your equation chart. So my velocity uh, is going to be equal to uh, velocity in the y squared is equal to velocity in the x. Whoa, no, it's not. Wow. Initial in the y squared oh. um, plus 2 times gravity times my change in y. y final minus y initial, right? So my change in y, I started at 45, I ended at 0, so it was a negative change in velocity, wasn't it? Yes, it was. All right, so my velocity uh, y squared is going to be equal to, isn't this just zero? Oh, I'm so, whoa, whoa, no, it's not, 40. Um, <laughs> previous one was that. So 40 meters per second squared plus 2 times a negative 10 meters per second squared acceleration, and then uh, a, a, a negative 45. Why is it a negative 45? Remember, delta y is y minus y initial, and I, uh, my y initial was 45 meters, and my y was zero. Zero minus 45, negative 45, okay? Um, I don't think green shows up very good. Maybe it does. I don't know. I like red. 
Guns up. Go Teft. Um, all right, so 40 squared. So velocity in the Y is really going to be this big, ginormous square root because it's the square root of everything, all this stuff. So 40 squared is what, 1,600 uh, plus, whoo, wow, uh, 10 times 45 is 450. Hey, look, negative times a negative. It's a positive times it by 2. That's going to be what, 900? Yes. Add that to 1,600. So my velocity in the Y is going to be the square root of 25, uh, 2,500 there. All right. So if you take the square root of 2,500, I don't have my calculator on me. Oh, man. I think it's 50, isn't it? should be 50. 50 times 50 is 2,500. There we go. Um, that froze me up. Wow. I'm still having a good day, though. I'm not going to let that ruin my day. Velocity in the Y is going to be a 50. And it could be a positive or a negative 50 meters per second. It could be. So using this equation, you're going to get a little ambiguity because if you take the square root, this number could have been a negative, right? So in positive plus or minus 50 meters per second. Let's use some logic here. What direction is it going right before it hit the ground? It's going down. It's not a positive 50. It definitely is a negative 50. But when you do square it out, you could get, you could be positive, could be negative. You just need to think about notation. If you know where it's going or the direction it's going, that's going to solve your problem for you, okay? So that's done. Um, so there is my velocity in the Y. I threw it up at, fit, at 20, but here's what's really cool. Here's something that we can always see because of, of parabolas, and we're going to ignore air resistance for the most part. At this spot right here, what is my velocity? What is my velocity here? I'll just call this, this is VY, this is V, or this is V not Y, this is VY. Let's just call it V question mark and give it another, you know, term. I don't know. But where do I, where it lands at the exact same position. So if I throw it up and I catch it, what speed will I catch it with? I still threw it up at 40 meters per second. I started at positive 45, it goes up and it comes down right at 45, doesn't it, okay? Here's what's kind of neat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase all these so we can see that. Let's go right into at this spot right here. What's my change in Y? I started at 45 and I ended at 45. So now this is now zero. If y is zero, I can erase all of that. My velocity question mark squared is equal to my velocity initial question mark, or my velocity initial squared. So velocity at the question mark is the square root of velocity initial in the y squared. Velocity at this question mark is velocity initial in the y. That's something cool to know too, and we can use the third kinematic or the, the the third one on your equation chart, kinematic equation, to uh, to. If you're always going to start and end at the same velocities. Again, understand it because of the squares. They could be positives. They could be negatives. There's some ambiguity, right? I do know this is positive going up, as it's going down. It does have to be negative. So again, my velocity question mark is a negative 40 meters per second. So you're going to catch things at the same speed that you're going to throw them at. If you're laying on your bed, you're throwing a baseball in the air and catching it, throwing a baseball in the air and catching it, you're catching at the same speed you're going to toss it at. You want to chunk it really high in the air, you're going to catch it at a faster speed than just kind of doing one of these. If you throw it really high, you're going to catch it, caught it this time, at a faster speed, okay? So 24-minute long video. Oh, man, apologize. A lot of content in there, a couple examples for you. Um, to do. So pretty much it's the same thing we've done all along. We're just flipping the y-axis and we're always going to use a constant gravity of negative 10 when we're on Earth. We want to do this on the moon. We got to change gravity to a different number, but it would be the same equations, okay? Thanks for watching. Hopefully you had a great three-day weekend. Stay classy.